Really? Hi, this is Joe Stedman. Hi, this is Joe Stedman. Today, Monica and I are going to be doing a, a, a discussion review on For the People by GNT. Uh, this is Mark Herman's design about the American Civil War. It's a car-driven game. Had this game for a while, uh, but we finally started playing it. We really enjoy it. Um, it was a little bit much at first, but that we, I'll preface that by saying uh, it's, it's, it's still a great game. Uh, it's a car-driven game. We started off, we love Twilight Struggle, we play that up constantly. And we also like Washington's War, so this was the next progression. And it's also the next progression in, in how complicated it is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Uh, Monica's going to talk about the game some and kind of show you how the game works a little bit, and then I might interject a little bit, and then she'll give her thoughts, and I'll give my thoughts on the game. And remember, this is just our thoughts and kind of how the game works. In ten minutes, we cannot possibly do a uh, in-depth how you play this game and include all the strategy hints and how every single piece works and everything, so don't complain. Right? Right. <laughs> Monica here. <laughs> With a little review of For the People. Um, opening up the game box, you're going to get a paper map. Um, we have the deluxe map. Ooh. What does the deluxe map mean? Sticker. Yes, we actually have ours underneath a poster frame. Yes, it doesn't come with this poster frame. This is. But it's that same style map, but we have ours on heavy cardboard, deluxe version. Right. What I really like, one of the things that this game has that a lot of games do not have, is the rules of play times two. Well, actually, ours, I think. Did it come with one? I think the deluxe map came with one. Oh. And then the actual game came with one, but either way... I we... recommend getting two. <laughs> yes, because both of us are in it all the time. <laughs> every every turn. Monica does it. Every time I pull off a good move, she pulls out the rule book and wants to make sure it's legal. Vice versa. Yes. Also, we have a easy guide here, just one of them. It's on super heavy, heavy cardboard. Super heavy cardboard. I think it's just heavy cardboard, not super heavy. The cards, however, these are super heavy, it feels like. They're... They're a little tricky to shuffle. Um, a lot of cards. If you don't know, Over a hundred cards. There's a lot of cards. Don't mix These ones them. are face down, so I can't look at we're them. We're in the middle we're of the a, middle. We're in the middle of a game right yeah. now, so. Yes, we're in the sum summer of 1863. You go to shuffle these things. They're, you know. Anyways. I'm so yeah, that would be a minor complaint. The cards are very thick, but well, I guess that's not really. They're gonna a last then. There you go. Um, of course we have. Brown and blue counters representing the Union and the Confederates. Mm -hmm. Lots of counters everywhere. And PC markers, political control markers. Um, Army markers, which first for me. Um, what else do we have here? I think that's about it. I, got a whole, I use an old Avalon Hill tray box to separate my counters. Right. But, yeah. All right, so how, does, what's the, uh, how do you win the game? You win the game. There are two victory conditions for the Union. I'm mm -hmm. playing Union. Um, if I she's the Yankee, doodle dandy. If I close down, you see these orange bars on the South States. If I close down and destroy those are the resource all these centers, resource centers, mm -hmm. and all the blockade ports, blockade runner ports, yeah, I win. Or what's the second way? That's the hard way to win. The easy oh, the way to win is to will. have is to have more. Strategic will. Right, you got to get the end of the game. Right, you got to get the Confederates down to zero at the end of the game. Right now, um, I'm not doing that hot. This person who is white, that's you. The Confederates, um, yeah. They have 91. Yeah. And <laughs> the Union, Union has 58, but so I I'm, mean, I'm almost auto victory to you. Because how, how did how did how did the Confederates auto win? Wait a His auto victory is if he has twice my strategic will. Right. There are various ways to gain and lose that throughout the game. Right. Um, okay, that's how you win. All right. The turns are over the course of five years, possibly, if you make it that long, spring, mm -hmm. summer, fall. Right. So Union, we have blue, Confederate, gray, and then either player. And you can use it for its operational value in the corner, and or you can yep, use the text. Various things you can do with the operational value. Oh, a lot of things you can do with the operational value. Mostly, though, Still learning how mostly is to move your, the most common units. thing is to, use, to move your armies or your individual units. units around. And speaking of units, there's three types of units, right? There's divisions. Mm -hmm. Divisions are just People. individual dudes. Like this. Like that. That guy there, that's a division of Yankees. 1,000 men. Or roundabouts. And then there is I a core. 
So right there, General Banks, he has... Uh, you going to do this when he's not upside down? Sure. There's Beauregard, Beauregard, and he's got uh, two SPs, or strength points of dudes with him, and Paducah. So he's a core. A core is uh, strength points with a general, and they have special abilities. They can uh, move a little farther. They can do different things. And then show me an, an we army. We have armies all over here. Because... Like here's, the, here's the army of Northern Virginia facing off against the army of the Potomac. You see the Confederate capital capital is not looking very yeah. secure. Yeah, he's got the Yankees are coming know. down into Virginia, and they will be thusly removed. But so sure. over here you have the... Uh, the army marker thing. So, once you make your army, like it condenses what here's, you have here's to have on the sacrilege. Map. I've got Robert E. Lee in charge of the Army of Tennessee. Anyway, um, so once you create an army, Show then you the use movement sum summary. Right. So, yeah, there's kind of a breakdown. It shows you what armies can do, how big they can be, how far they can go, and the rules that apply to with generals with them. But so once you create an army, you tr you track how big they are with the SP markers. And then you can see who their commanding general is, who their lesser generals are, if they have cav or not. And those are all the details of the game, like when you add up your modifiers. What do we use these dice here for, honey? Those are our components. What do we use them right. for? Right. These components are used to throw at each other when <laughs> one of us is having a bad turn. <laughs> or during battle to keep track of the modifiers. Right. We, 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 have the mod we use these. Dyro modifiers. We add up our dyro modifiers with this. And then you're going to have a large battle or a medium battle or a small battle, and it shows you uh, after you roll your modifiers what happens. And then uh, the asterisk means that the attacker wins, otherwise the defender wins. It depends on who takes the most casualties. And then there's always the deadly 10 plus. What's that mean? That means there is cause for worry and concern for your generals in right. your army or your and a little thing that's neat in this game is if you're the attacker and you like put Bobby Lee and a bunch of good guys in there and you get lots of die roll modifiers and you come after a couple of men a in a couple of, a couple of yeah you, you attack someone and you roll 10 plus then you're gonna have to roll a separate roll after that and possibly your generals are gonna die and that will happen generals will die uh, they kind of lead from the front in the Civil War so you gotta be careful not to get too many positive they can modifiers die or they can be sent to the back right well yeah for next turn well for that case they'll die but there's other ways they can be sent back onto a future turn. Mm -hmm. We have our uh, generals that are going to come out already stacked up here on the turn track, so they'll come out on subsequent turns. Um, that's that's more or less how it works. It's a point to point, right? So you got the colors, you move from point to point. There's what was that? There's railroads and there's roads. And C movement. And C movement for the mostly for the Union. They, uh, they have the assault, uh, amphibious assault modifier, which is how they can take the forts and they can play points into that to get it she's already got it up to four so it's pretty powerful then you have the blockade port uh, blockade level which is how she can stop me from getting my uh, some of my reinforcements um, the rule books a little, there are two main things about this rules that are most confusing are rivers and generals right yeah. and the cab the cab units are a little confusing I'm not even going to go into those it took us a while to figure it out but there's some uh, you know lots of advice and help on the internet you can figure that out so any closing remarks about we the people I think it's I okay. mean I'm sorry for the people? I think this is the most difficult game I had to learn, and I didn't have to, but I tried to learn. Mm -hmm. um, most war game-ish, I would say. Just the whole concept, there are so many options every turn I want to do, hundred different things. You right. only have you know, a limited number of turns, limited number of cards. Right, you feel like a blind man at first, right? Stabbing around in the dark because you've got so many things that you can do, especially earlier than a war, and you're not really sure what the strategy is. So we already know this game is, a, is going to be a scratch because we're kind of using, we've made a lot of mistakes. Oh, yeah. But uh, the next time we set it up and play, which will be very soon, I'm sure, um, it'll be totally different. We enjoy the game. I think it's really well balanced. Um, good high quality production. And it's the Civil War game. And uh, I used to have the old uh, Victory Games Civil War game, which was my stand to. But I like car driven games. I like the... I like the way it makes you feel when you want to do five things and you can only do one and yeah so there you go so for the people by GMT um, you can pick it up what three thumbs up <laughs> you can pick it up yeah you can pick it up somewhere yeah I shake it like this because I'm like I'm gonna cream it in the die go like this sorry. oh slam it sorry, on the board sorry, sorry. look at you knocked everything like the earthquake. It was an earthquake. Well, anyway, so... Anyways. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, 
This is Eric Selmerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.